Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In the last tutorial, we looked at one of the applications of uh, autoencoders, which was denoising images, and for that we worked on MNIST images, you know, MNIST database. Now, in this tutorial, let's uh, continue denoising images, except in this case, let's actually use our custom images, you know, our own microscope images. Just a quick reminder again, in case you haven't watched my last three videos on this topic, autoencoders, they reduce the dimension of your input image into a, you can call it a code, and then we decode it and reconstruct the image. So the input would be an image, out, uh, well, input data in this example is an image, and the output is exactly the same as our input. Now we are using this autoencoder structure to apply this uh, for denoising. Now, how are we doing that? We, instead of saying that, okay, my input and output are the same, or input and the reconstructed image are the same, meaning instead of defining X and X, okay, we are deceiving the system that this X is actually, I mean, we are saying that this is X, but in reality, this is a clean image, okay? Think of this as fitting the model to an, uh, of no, uh, between the noisy image and a clean image, okay? Here is a visual representation. So we are actually trying to supply a noisy image as an input and reconstruct a clean image. Uh, and uh, as this process happens, we are obviously going to train a model and use that model to denoise future images. Okay, so that's the theory behind this. And for this example, for today, we are going to work on a uh, an image that's actually collected on a 3D X-ray microscope. And a 3D X-ray microscope, think of it as a CT scan, except uh, on dead stuff. You know, in this case, uh, 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 a rock sample from uh, uh, what looks like a sandstone, and this is from an oil and gas application. So if you don't spend enough time at every uh, rotation of your sample, then you may have a noisy reconstructed uh, final input. At the same time, if you actually spend enough time, meaning if you leave enough integration time, you get a clean image. So if you come from a light microscope background, very similar, right? I mean, you have a long dwell time, you get clean image, you have very short dwell time, you have noisy image. But then the question is, do you really have to dwell for a longer time uh, now that that depends on what you're trying to extract, right? So if your interest is in uh, uh, segmenting this data set, as long as the data set is segmentable, then you don't need to waste a lot of your time in getting the best images possible unless you're trying to use that for publication. But typically, you would like to speed up the analysis as fast as you can, right? I mean, because as long as you're not compromising any of the information. So uh, one way of not compromising your information is to actually speed up your imaging process, meaning you're compromising on signal to noise, but if you can regain that by denoising, then that's a great way of doing it, okay? So there are many ways of denoising. Of course, to go ahead and try non-local means filter, for example, that works great, okay? And isotropic diffusion actually works also very well. These are traditional ways. Now, if you have uh, thousands of these type of images where you have noise, now you can use machine learning to train an autoencoder, for example, on the noisy and the clean images. And in future, now you can actually go ahead and start collecting noisy images, meaning faster imaging, and uh, go ahead and clean it up using the trained model. Okay, so that's the, that's the story behind this application. So now let's jump into the code. And uh, to begin with, this is the code from my last tutorial, which I literally recorded uh, 10 minutes ago. And here we actually downloaded the MNIST dataset. In fact, again, I believe I still have that uh, web page open. So MNIST database for handwritten digits, and we literally use these two lines, okay? So where we downloaded the MNIST dataset from Keras, and that's what uh, that's what this line is, okay? And uh, where we have our training dataset and testing dataset all obtained within this one line of code, okay? We downloaded everything with that line. And then we converted those pixel values uh, into a floating 32 from integer values. 
and divided each of those by 255. So we are normalizing every pixel value to a value between zero to one. And then we are kind of reshaping and getting this, uh, uh, you know, in shape for our uh, for our uh, uh, autoencoders. Now, one thing that we have done there was uh, we actually added a little bit of noise because these images were clean. So we simulated noise in this case. Typically, when you do that, that, you know, uh, I mean, obviously, that's that's one way of actually getting noisy images from clean images. But uh, it really helps if you have real noise that's randomly distributed rather than generating something that's based out of some sort of a normal distribution, okay? Which is what we have in our case. So let me switch to the code that I have for today's exercise, for this tutorial's exercise, okay? So uh, these two images are in uh, folders called uh, sandstone slash noisy images and sandstone slash clean images, okay? So obviously in the previous uh, video, we kind of uh, gotten our X uh, train and X test directly from my MNIST dataset. Now we have to create our own. That's the only thing, okay? So how do we do that? Now again, I'm not gonna go through the details of all these uh, headers. Again, these are self-explanatory. We are uh, we are importing the required libraries for our uh, you know for our Python code. The only thing I added here is TQDM. In case you're not familiar with this, this kind of gives you a visual representation of things happening inside, for example, a for loop. Okay, you'll see that in a second. Uh, meaning when we are resizing images inside the for loop, I can actually visualize the progress of, uh, of this. Otherwise, you're staring at a blank screen and you don't know what the progress is. Okay, so now, um, as usual, we set a random seed uh, in the back end. Uh, so whenever the random number is being used by uh, the deep learning uh, you know, engine, then it's going to use a, the same seed all the time. Now, my images are much larger than 320. I think they are like 1K by 1K each image, but I'm resizing them to 320 because I'm working on a system that has only 2 GB of GPU. Uh, and uh, if I increase the size, then it's going to yell at me. It's not, basically, it wasn't working. So for now, for demonstration purposes, I'm uh, using 320. By the way, one way of handling large images is to divide them into patches and then just work on patches and stitch them back together, put the patches back together. But again, let's not complicate things for now. Okay, so where is my noisy data coming from? Okay, so step one, my noisy data is, again, as usual, I'm gonna start with an empty uh, array or list, and I, I populate this list as I go through each image in, uh, in the folder. So I'm using OS.list list directory, you know, uh, to actually go through these uh, folders, walk through this, this folder, and then open each image. So for I in files, okay, for I in this files, it's going to read each image using OpenCV. And I'm gonna read images as a gray level image. Okay, these are all gray level images, but I'm gonna read them as a gray level image by supplying the value of zero. And once the images are read, I'm going to resize them to what size? To resize them to 320 by 320 so it works well on my system. And then I'm gonna convert that into uh, an array and then dump it into this noisy underscore data, okay? I do the, exactly the same even for clean data. So if I run this until this point, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. You see down here the progress bar, this is exactly what that TQDM does. Okay, so now these are done. Now you can see a whole bunch of things uh, up here in my variable explorer. Now we just need to look at the noisy data. We have two, 462 images uh, under noisy and 462 images, corresponding images in clean. Okay, and each of this is a NumPy array. So if I open this up, uh, it should open, okay, double click, open there. So now you can actually see, okay, I have zero all the way down to 461. So that's total 462 images. And each image is 320 by 320 by one. Again, we resized it to 320 by 320 and it's one channel, that's because it's gray level image. For color images, that would be three, right? So 320 by 320 by three, but right now we have 320 by 320 by one. Okay, the values, if you look at them, they're all floating 32 uh, na numbers. That's because uh, we uh, somehow, somewhere, we probably changed it even uh, otherwise. Uh, it's good that, okay, they are floating 32 uh, right there. 
but still the values are going from 0 to 255 here. Okay, so remember, uh, even with MNIST data set, we divided each value by 255, I mean each pixel, so we get a value between 0 to uh, uh, 1. So that's exactly what we are going to do next. Okay, so noisy, both the noisy da uh, data and the clean data, we are going to convert them to float 32. In this case, they are floating 32 anyway. Uh, and then I'm dividing those by 255. So let's run these two lines. And now you can actually see where, if I can find it, noisy data, 462. Let me go ahead and open it again. And here you can actually see, uh, uh, where is it? Oh, sorry. I opened the wrong one. Noisy train, okay, noisy train. I reshaped it to a size uh, of 462 images, right? 462 images, 320 by 320 by one. And this is the dimensions that actually go into my uh, uh, into my autoencoder. And then once it's got changed into that dimension, I divided those by 255. So if I open this noisy train, I don't know if it can open it. Let's see. No, it, it, uh, it cannot open anything that's more than three dimensions for now. Uh, but anyway, let's, uh, uh, I mean, you can see some values over there, so you don't have to, I mean, 0.13, right? So it got converted into uh, uh, an array, you know, uh, uh, with values between 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 255. Okay, so we are all set, actually, right? I mean, after that, we are basically set. So again, I switch back and forth between MNIST and custom images, assuming that you watch this MNIST and you can relate between these two, okay? I uh, recommend you watching the MNIST one first, and then coming to this other this specific video if you haven't uh, if you haven't looked at the previous one. Okay, so what did we do after uh, we did that? After we have this, we added some noise, but we don't have to do that now. We have noisy images ready anyhow. So let's uh, uh, let's actually display some of the images and corresponding noisy images just as a sanity check. Okay. So there you go. So here the top are the noisy images and in the bottom you have the corresponding clean uh, images. So that's all set and then we have a model down here and again the way I designed this model is uh, it looks very similar to the one I used earlier except I changed these values to, uh, let me create some space, I changed these values to our size is 320, right? So 320 by 320 by one instead of, uh, again, let me switch to MNIST instead of 28 by 28 by one. So this time it's going to be very slow because the images are much larger, okay? But just to, as a sanity check, let me go back to my model checking Python file where I uh, use it, you know, for sanity check to see, okay, my input, well, here it says, oh, sorry. I should change this to 320, okay? So not 2320, 320. Let's run this one more time. So here is the model. Input is 320 by 320 by one. After the first convolutional layer, 320, 320, 32, and so on, all the way down to 40 by 40 by eight. So my 320 by 320 image is gonna be uh, compressed or not compressed by down sample down to 40 by 40 by eight. And then we are going to expand it back to 320 by 320 by one. So in a way we are reconstructing the image back, except in this case, hopefully that would be a denoised image. Okay. So there you go. And, uh, because we do not have any test data. So in this, uh, previous example, the MNIST guys were nice enough, you know, with that data set, uh, uh, we could have, uh, I mean, we unwrapped our testing data set. So we had uh, 60,000 training and 10,000 tested data sets over there. But here we have to create our own testing. And the easiest way to actually create your own testing or validation data set is by using scikit-learn's model selection train test split. And uh, so in, in, based on, uh, in this example, I'm gonna hold out 80, I mean, 20% for testing and 80% for training. Okay, that's what this is. So uh, from both noisy train and clean train, which is nothing but our noisy train right there and the clean training over there, okay? We are gonna hold out 20% uh, for testing. So only 80% of all 462 images are going to be used for our training, okay? And finally, model.fit, again, Previously here, we trained fit this on X-Train noisy and clean images, right? Noisy images, clean images. That's exactly what we are trying to do. 
X train and Y train. I should have actually used the different names here, but uh, again, because we kind of uh, extracted these uh, or uh, did the splitting here, the names kind of got changed here. But again, X train is nothing but our noisy training images and Y train is nothing but our clean train images, okay? So I'm gonna fit the model on the training images and then uh, do only 10 epochs for this video purposes with a batch size of eight because it's gonna, uh, in this example, it's gonna late, uh, load eight images at a time and then perform 10 epochs and shuffle equals to true, uh, which means for each epoch, it's going to shuffle the images and randomly pick these images, okay? I mean, shuffle these images. Verbose equals to one means, okay, I wanna see the progress being printed on the screen and validation split, I'm further going to hold out about 10% for validation as part of my, as part of my training uh, process. And finally, let's go ahead and print the model accuracy between the test, uh, you know, noisy images and then as a percentage, okay? And I'm gonna save the model and uh, why not predict the model on one of the images and go ahead and print it on the screen so we can see it. Okay, so that's what uh, the code does. And let's go ahead and run the code uh, in its entirety because we think, I think we looked at all the way down to down here and the only thing that's left is just fitting the model. So let's go ahead and run it. So step one, it's actually resizing all the images into whatever that size we mentioned, 320 by 320, both images, clean and no uh, noisy and clean. And now it should start uh, the training process. Ignore all the warnings for now. It's going a bit slow as you can see and I'll pause the video or fast forward this video until the 10th epoch and then we'll continue. Okay, I apologize for all these warning messages. Again, I haven't seen these when I was doing my test run, but uh, let's ignore them for now. Look at, uh, first of all, look at this image. Obviously, this is not, uh, uh, you know, close to the original image, but it is definitely denoised, okay? Now, if you go back up all through all these warnings, I have no clue what that is. I was printing out the test accuracy. It says it's 25.94 accurate. Obviously, a horrible accuracy, right? I mean, uh, at least we'd like to see anything 90% or better. In fact, uh, if, you, if you have a lot more training images and if you have uh, a lot more epochs, we would see, we would see uh, you know, much better accuracy. Um, let's actually, in fact, go wild and uh, do 100 epochs, okay? I'll obviously pause the video and I'll show you the result after 100 epochs. So hopefully the result would be better than 25.94%. Okay, there you go. It looks a bit cleaner, but still I'd be very surprised if the accuracy is any better than 25, 30-ish because we have very limited training data. So let's go back again, apologize for all these uh, warnings, but uh, uh, first of all, yeah, 100 epochs and you can see the final validation accuracy is 25%. So 25.94%. And uh, again, this is uh, because of the limitation that's coming from having limited training data. One trick that you can try to do is uh, use the data gen. Uh, again, go ahead and read up about it. And if I have time, I'll make uh, a video about it. But this is basically, you can use data gen to, uh, uh, to uh, generate more training data. In a way, you can take your input training data, you can rotate it, you can flip it, you can add some sort of a, uh, uh, it's called data augmentation, by the way. It does actually help. It does improve the test accuracy, but uh, nothing beats, uh, you know, uh, having a lot of data. Again, we were only working with uh, 400 images, so I don't expect anything better than that, but uh, at least I hope this tutorial gave you a good idea about uh, about uh, uh, one of the applications of autoencoders, which is denoising, and at, at the same time highlights the importance of having a lot of training data. 
uh, to achieve this type of tasks. So let's uh, cover a different topic in the next tutorial. I plan on talking about anomaly detection, but instead of using an image, let's actually use a couple of streams of uh, 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 data to actually detect anomalies. So until next time, please go ahead and subscribe my uh, channel if you haven't already done so. It keeps me encouraged to create more content like this. Thank you very much.